Uh, our, our most significant win so far has been the decision to fully embrace a paperless office and personal lines. Um, around five years ago, we traded in our photocopier for a document center that allows us to can copy, scan, fax, uh, scan directly to the workstations and allows us to attach digital copies of all correspondence to the activity log of each client, including uh, telephone conversations. And we also do uh, an application package that has all the information that the companies want for uh, upload audit. Um, then around four to five years ago, we determined that the CSIO download was sufficiently accurate to allow us to trust the information in our BMS. Until that point, we received all documents for renewals and endorsements from the companies, and they were T-filed in our office. Uh, we kept the current year's file plus one year prior on hand and moved two year, file, two year prior files to a storage locker we were rented. Uh, we kept a total of seven years policy documents, and we, but we essentially never referenced those T-file documents. Our BMS is key, uh, SIGXP from Kiel, and we felt it contained all the information from policy renewals and endorsements that we no longer needed to keep the paper as backup. Uh, since we were entering all endorsements on our company portals, there was no reason to check the download against paper for accuracy as we were getting back exactly what we put in. Uh, we did this uh, all before eDocs download, and f uh, for the few instances we needed the, the, do the documents, they were available on our company portals. We turned off the paper for each company as they made the copies available on their portals, and we've received not received paper endorsements or renewals from essentially any, any of our markets for years. Uh, we've beta tested eDocs for our markets as they have made it available, and this week we now have three to four three of our four companies providing the download. Um, it's not a huge benefit for us because we were already in a paperless environment. Uh, but it does uh, provide a few few things where we used to have to refer to the documents. Uh, further step along the uh, e-environment path was to have our BMS automatically bill each renewal and endorsement. We currently manually bill new business, but are evaluating that decision as well. Our decision has re resulted in numerous benefits. We no longer rent the uh, off-storage uh, facility at a savings of about $300 per month. Although we still receive some correspondence from our companies, we no longer re require anyone to go through large stacks of email and T-file the documents, nor do we, do, do we need anyone to go to the client base and invoice each of those transactions. I would estimate the staff savings would be equivalent to between a half and one, one full-time employee in an office of five employees. So I think that's pretty significant. Um, Okay, I, I don't have much more. Uh, by relying on just the BMS, our staff can more efficiently service our clients. There's no time spent tracking down the paper documents, and of course, it's always seemed to be that the one document you couldn't find was the one you were looking for. Besides efficiencies, we also it also allows for more standardization of staff, staff practices. You don't have the more computer literate ones relying on the B, BMS, whereas the less computer savvy are using the paper documents. Since there's no safety net of paper, everyone has to do a much better job at documenting the computer. I, I have to believe this has lowered our E&O exposure, but that's a little bit more difficult to quantify. Finally, we freed up the office space previously used for file storage, and it now provides us room to grow. Our final, uh, uh, finally, our experience in personal lines has allowed us to make the decision to go paperless in our commercial department for small commercial accounts. And that's where we are now. Hey, any quick questions for Rick? Laura Hill, We decided uh, to look at the renewal list specifically, and what we found that we were spending a lot of time um, managing the renewal process. So we automated it, basically. What we would do is we would start everything in our broker management system. We generate an activity which sets up a renewal, uh, which, which starts the renewal process. The electronic documents come in, they are attached to our system, and the activity is closed, so that we manage that process um, by exception only. The other thing that uh, was a huge time saving was we get the electronic data information from downloaded from the companies, 
but our broker management system allows us to automatically invoice the transactions also. It's not perfect, but we found that by automating this process, we saved a lot of time. And I'm talking about, we have 65,000 policies that we automated. Um, we automated the invoicing and the renewal letter from that. So we saved um, 5,000 transactions per month, which works out to about 300 transactions per day and two bodies. Now those two bodies, we did not eliminate. We moved them into a client-facing role. We were able to uh, provide faster service for our clients. Um, we'd answer the phone faster. And we would be able to discuss their policy, their renewal policy with them as they called in or we called them instead of managing the paper that had no value. Um, in 2009, we took our um, full paper file system and uh, decided to go with a third party uh, document management vendor, and that was ET File. And so that's a separate filing system away from our BMS, which is Power Broker. Um, it allowed us uh, several different uh, functionalities in that we have um, producers and customer service representatives that are off site. It allowed us to um, have that system and all of our filing system available to them at really a click. Um, making their workflow more efficient, making our in-house CSRs workflow more efficient as well. Um, it, and it allowed us to grow in that manner uh, where we were able to put more people uh, off-site, more people um, working from home, and that um, all of our documents are available to everybody through this uh, broker management system. Oh, so I did say ET file. Yes. And we're using Power Broker as a BMS. Um, well, Unicut started uh, down the path in 2003 when we started to work on broker connectivity and we really um, built a transaction processing methodology in a portal. Um, what that technology really gave us was the ability to then provide brokers with policy inquiry, which we considered to be probably the biggest um, advantage to both uh, the broker as well as the carrier. Um, you can, from your broker management system, uh, through, a th through a single request, within about 12 seconds, you get back the exposure, the drivers, the vehicle, the claims, the billing. It's one thing. It comes through in a, f a format that you can actually save it into your broker management system. Um, and I think really the best uh, advantage is that the customer service elements for the broker are significantly enhanced. The call comes in. you at you speak for a few min few seconds really and just do the query, um, get it back, answer the question and then move on. So I think the whole concepts around once and done are really critical and I think we have to look at those as really being not really revenue based transactions so I think brokers have to do them as quickly as possible. The old method was three to five minutes between a phone call or a query or a portal search um, and really that means a call back, that means not getting them, there's a lot of things. Uh, what we've currently done with that is actually to enhance it. Uh, we've um, differentiated through security that every broker um, working, every staff member in the office should be able to do inquiry. And there's different security levels, so you can give them that, but they can't transaction process. So that's pretty important. So that uh, you can make sure that all of your CSRs, TSRs, everybody, even producers, can have the same access to our system. Okay, <laughs> different. Why are the Ottawa centers like possums? Possums. Because they go to sleep at home and get killed on the road. <laughs> I 
was my that was my Maple Leaf joke yesterday, but different crowd and it changes. So. <laughs> Uh, real quick, our vendor system is TBW, and I think the one functionality that we look at for our brokers is if they're not using it, is the automated policy change process and the uh, remarket capabilities within TBW. Um, our system has uh, incorporates the rating and underwriting within the life cycle of the policy, and within that change process for, for endorsement processing or policy change, um, the broker real-time can actually get a change premium and a, uh, an annualized premium at that point of sale, which is uh, pretty significant. Uh, renewal time, uh, the remarket view, it's a one-click and it rewrites all the different markets for uh, the broker as well. And, uh, and again, there's significant time savings in that. It can take it down from a minute to two minutes instead of uh, the half hour, the hour process you have to go through to actually uh, remarket your policies. So by virtue of the rating and underwriting within the, the policy life cycle, that can be within the system itself and for those carriers that are getting to the place, uh, being able to extend those, the rating and underwriting to the BMS, um, they can actually connect to uh, those carriers that can do that. I mean, we're in the, the baby step stages of that in the industry, but that's where this whole process is going for us. That's it. So we heard in, in sessions today really about reviewing your workflows and really getting eliminating the non-value steps um, and making sure that you're using the tools or I'm going to say not using the tools that aren't helping your workflow. So if there's a process that you're doing just because you've always done it that way, you want to change and shift the thinking to actually use the functionalities to improve and add efficiencies to the workflows that you're doing. So it's really about sitting down and looking at all the functionalities available to you and not just one specific one. So again, we don't sell uh, we don't sell any BMSs. We don't sell any systems. We actually help brokers use them. And one of the first things that we try and do when we are developing new workflows and processes for brokers is that we actually look at what we call reusable electronic information. So we try and create SEMSI within the group and make sure that however we entered information in the first time, that information is recyclable. So how is it that we entered the information in and how can I use it down the road again to be able to print out my letters, to be able to print out my pink slips, to be able to send information off to the portal, to be able to create a binder or a cover note uh, certificate down the road. So in all those means, it actually we find it actually adds up quite a bit when information, if entered the right way the first time, if it's able to be recycled by other people down the road later on, is where the true benefits and gains are. So we have a, a diverse uh, clientele. We have everything from small one-person operations to uh, the largest brokers in Canada. So to narrow it down to just one must-do functionality is difficult for us. I think the important thing is that we have a very broad range of offerings so that regardless of the size of the brokerage, we have the tools that, that, they, that they need. If you force me to narrow it down to one thing, <laughs> I, I, I would say something that supports growth because it's really difficult for brokers to grow in this market. So our marketing plans, I think, offers the, the brokerage the tool that they need to systematically market to their, to their client base. Um, it gives them the tools to uh, track the efficiency of that marketing campaign so that they can, they can tweak it as required. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very fast-paced world. You can't build something once and then just do it for the rest of your, your life. You have to be able to be flexible. So being able to uh, um, review the, the success of your marketing campaign is critical so that you can, you know, what's working well, continue to do it. What's not working so well, tweak it so that, you know, that it, that it does work well or, or move on, you know, as they say, fail fast. So uh, I think marketing plans is, is this, the functionality that I would, I would lead with. Sure. Uh, thanks, Wendy. I'm going to tie into Sean's theme of getting the data in once and having it there for the entire life cycle, uh, right from the producer at the point of sale uh, th through the marketing group in their pol in their brokerage uh, to the carrier and back. And um, they say there's a Chinese proverb I think that says uh, uh, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And in real time, that is getting your credentials into the system and taking advantage of single sign on all that stuff. And it's a baby step, but it's one that almost nobody takes. Uh, it's unbelievable how much functionality is available today um, that isn't being used because people haven't taken that one step. Um, in our case this morning, we did a uh, real-time demo that went from the iPad straight into PolicyWorks 
uh, out to Coachman's website, uh, got some asked back questions, answered those questions, got a real-time quote, bound the policy, and saw the policy wording. So that's what it opens up if you put just your credentials in. So that's mine. Single sign-on, it's one of the most valuable tools. We are a middleware between a lot of your different broker management systems and a lot of your carriers. And there's a lot of really fancy, really slick transactions you can do, but it begins with a single step. And that is taking away that pain point of credential management and security management and using the tools to get that through so that those security risks of the yellow sticky notes under the keyboards, and yes, they are there in your offices, go look. Um, go away and get those passwords into that system and get that single sign-on through. It'll help your users, as, as Sean and, and several others here are pointing out, get that data seamlessly through, recycle it, reuse it, pass it through, but it begins with them not getting through to those portals, getting through to those different websites with the single sign-on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry. First, we defined what exactly what it was that we needed. We standardized it. We ran it once at month end. We plop it into a shared directory or an intranet site. Um, those who require it can go to that site and get it. They can print it off. They can do whatever they want with it. But it's stored and maintained in one central location. Um, at this point, we're still printing and, and handing them out. Uh, we do have shared drives as well, but most of them are are not paperless yet. It's on the list, yeah, for sure. So we will stick with you on this one. Uh, how can users take automatic inputs in the new EDI process? Uh, we were using uh, automatic invoicing with the EDI process and we actually did stop it because we had run into several transaction issues. Um, I'm told that that's improved quite a bit and it's definitely on our list to sort of revisit. And you think it's just power, power broker? Power broker, yes. So it's an ever look Yes. Yeah. Um, we use it, uh, like I said before, uh, for all renewals and all endorsements. The only thing we don't use it for is uh, new business. And uh, I guess that was, we were a little, little concerned that maybe there were going to be uh, some problems or issues. But since we're, we're also inputting all our new business into the portal and we get the premium right away, we're kind of wondering why we're doing that too. So we're... But we've had no, uh, no real issues with it. So, uh, do you think it will be a match if you were to use it to, to support real time services and make sure it's fair to the customer? I would say, as far as it can go, um, it would be nice if uh, we had the Kiel Unica solution for all our, our markets. But, uh, um, I mean, we have to, uh, we enter onto the, uh, the portals usually directly yes. for, for personal lines. Um, Quotes are done in CompuQuote, and then, oh, sorry, yeah, commercial lines, uh, no, it, we're still, we're still sending in for, for quotes, um, or, or uh, working on their portals for small business uh, for quotes. Okay, so that's two different things you're saying? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely.
Well, currently our markets, we're working with our markets to try and get some sort of downloaded file that we can reconcile. Currently, we are doing it at the company level. We run our production numbers. We tie into the checks that they send us, and it's, it's at the company level only. It's getting, it's frustrating. It's not quite there yet, but we're working with the companies to get something closer. Um, same question? Uh, okay. Uh, at this point, we're still sort of doing it the old-fashioned way with um, printing our loss notices out through the BMS and then faxing them or emailing them into the companies as per their preference, really. Um, okay, so the, the first one is, I guess, uh, we're using the claims forms in our BMS so that the claims information is, is uh, there as part of the client file. Um, and that includes when we import new new clients. So there are old claims through the previous carrier, whoever they were, get uh, imported into their uh, uh, their claim their uh, client file. Uh, so we have a full picture of the client. Um, we're still faxing uh, our claims into our insurers, um, uh, and uh, we're st uh, we're s we're get we're attaching fax notifications of claims notices from the insurers into the client file uh, so that we have the information there and we're starting to get them from one carrier via email um, and we use the abancing in the uh, BMS to follow up with the client after I believe it's 48 hours to make sure that the process the uh, claim claims process is, is going oh well uh, properly we have it on all our email messages, we have it on our renewal letters, but the uptake has been uh, very poor. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the app itself is great. It uh, tells a person what to do. It they input their policy number and company name. It geolocates the closest uh, police reporting center and um, um, uh, preferred body shop. And we have that on our website. That we have pictures, like our, our renewal letters go out with actual pictures of three smartphones to, to really draw it out to the clients. Um, it's on our website, on our homepage, get, get the app. And uh, the, uh, I think we've maybe had a half a dozen people download it. So. I just wanted to go. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. So yeah, we have to send them their press release. Yeah, yeah. But, Everything we, that goes out to the client for the last six months uh, has been pushing this app. So I don't know what it's going to take to get it to go. Okay. Mark, do you have any questions for the parts No, we don't because we, as most of the, <laughs> most of the people in here, um, we need uh, them to talk to a licensed broker in order to affect any changes. The, we do use email to get the communication. They can send in a communication, but all of the bottom of our emails say nothing is no no changes are valid until you've talked to a licensed broker. Yeah, our latest revamp of our website includes a client service uh, tab, um, and we have uh, I guess there's uh, four things that they can request client service for. One is a payment information, one is a request a policy review, uh, you know, their account review. We do have a number of things that they can uh, start the change in our website. Uh, there's a drop down list of a few, you know, about 10 items and then a place for them to put the description. The website automatically gives them a warning message that nothing w is uh, in effect until they receive confirmation from our office. But on, but like our our uh, mobile app hasn't been, there hasn't been a big uptake on that. If they want to, yeah. Uh, not fully electronic. Uh, we have, we do send out um, mostly 
sorry, uh, mostly like reprinted documents. Uh, if a client calls and they've misplaced the renewal, don't have the renewal, we'll send them a, an electronic copy of that, but we still do send the original paper documents as well. Well, um, we, uh, we document all the email addresses that we possibly can, and we have a facility that says um, if a client, we, we send out um, communications and broadcasts and workflows and marketing material all via email, and then we have um, identified those clients who have come back to us and said, please don't do this, we don't want this, blah, 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 but that's our, our main method of communication, with the exception of the paper stuff that has to be sent out. So. Okay, so um, I, on my questions here, I do uh, mention the mobile app for about six months, and it, it's been poor, um, the uptake. Uh, we're hoping that version two gives even more compelling reasons for, for the clients, but the struggle is to get the word out there to our clients. Um, we're, for mo mobility, we're using uh, laptops for quoting some, some new commercial at client's location. We have also um, uh, used laptops for in-house visits of personal lines clients to, to access our, our BMS or our office uh, desktops uh, f remotely. Um, but we're finding that the demand for that is less and less and less. Um, people prefer to communicate by email or whatever, and uh, most of our, uh, I, would, I would say what, half, half at least is probably uh, communication by email with our clients. Um, well, currently we're we're very restricted by what we can, um, what kind of opportunities we have um, for mobile communications. However, future sky's the limit. We can have our producers take, uh, you know, take their their tablets out, get the quotes, bind, print, you know, cloud, send it to them, like start and finish right in front of the client. Or the client, you know, what we've heard this morning is the client can do it when they want, how they want, and in what format they want. I think, you know, there's tons of opportunity. I would basically just mirror exactly what Laura said, is that the, the opportunity is there, but, but we don't have it yet at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, we've taken a, a quick look, and clearly we can't totally tell um, how much, uh, what kind of uptake, but it looks to me like we're about 70%, which I consider to be quite reasonable. We don't yet offer EDOCs, and I think that'll be the next challenge when we do. Um, but, uh, and I'm going to say, and we have now um, introduced an automated uh, policy in, um, endorsement, automated endorsement, which has got limited uptake, but... Uh, but really, I think from the traditional things that we expect brokers to do, we're seeing 70%, which I consider acceptable, but I certainly think that if brokers were to fully utilize it, it would be significantly better for them. Well, I really do, I'm going to emphasize again, I really think policy inquiry and what information brokers can self-serve, obtain uh, directly from the broker management systems is critically important. Um, what I'd, that one I want to get to 100%. And what I think will happen with it is once our brokers are all using it, they're going to say, you don't tell me this. I can't find that, in which case we'll enhance it. Uh, you know, but until we get to there, uh, you know, we will slowly look to building what we can. But I certainly think that if you're going to be in this kind of an immediate world of everything is now, 
uh, that brokers really have to not be calling carriers for information. They need to be able to self-serve. And if you don't find that what the, bro what the carrier is providing you is clean enough or quick enough, I think you have to complain. Well, I, I need to speak from a Unica perspective. We're not, we're more a small mid-market uh, commercial line, so we don't really expect to have huge amounts of broker connectivity, I'll be quite honest. I find that that type of business is more complex. Um, the uh, very broker connectivity piece, I think, is much more at the consumer type of uh, um, products that are s smaller cost. Uh, but what we are working very hard on is make it faster, better in the back end. These, are, these things are about better automated uh, rating. And there's a lot of things, because in general, uh, commercial systems have really lagged behind personal lines. And we're, we've got a huge focus on uh, bringing our uh, commercial up to speed. Yeah. That's right. Well, you know, that's that's a universal issue. Uh, we actually have a huge efficiency project that we're doing right now. Um, and the first piece we've done with it is actually we've taken frontline staff to be the, um, the groups that are actually looking at issues so that, uh, you know, we started with phone calls and how do we improve that. And so we did it cr uh, in across departments, uh, put representatives from a number of different departments on it and allowed them to come up with recommendations. They don't have to implement, that's our job, but uh, they have to, they could get to do the recommendations, they get to present it corporate wide at a staff meeting, which is a lot of recognition. And we believe that that's the way uh, we are going to get buy-in because it's got to it's got to be grassroots based. Well, again, we're a middleware vendor, so it's working not only with our brokers but also with the carriers and handling the data transmissions between the two. And we continuously strive to work with both partners to make sure that that data is accurately transferred from one system to the other and that any time that it's manipulated or modified or interpreted, that we're presenting that back to the broker for the final say to ensure that it's being interpreted correctly. The biggest uh, way we're able to demonstrate this is actually with our new policy change transaction. We take the carrier data and we take the broker data and we actually present it in a side-by-side -side interpretation so that if there are discrepancies or differences in the data integrity that would affect your errors and omissions by submitting an unintended change or having an unintended discrepancy between the systems, you have as a broker the ability to deal with that right at the time of the transaction rather than trying to chase the transaction later. Sure. Well, as a broker, I think you have to realize that your E-No exposure uh, begins the second that your producer steps his foot inside a new prospect's door. And, uh, and it follows, interestingly enough, it follows the data all the way through your desktop system, whether it's a CMS or a BMS, uh, and out to the carrier and back. And so uh, our focus has been on getting that, accurate, that data collected accurately and completely, uh, starting at the point of sale now with our uh, PolicyWorks producer app, um, sending that through to the desktop uh, program, which is the PolicyWorks program itself, um, and that provides a level of consistency of process to your brokerage that allows you to make sure that your staff are doing things in the same way and locking down transactions. Um, and then all the way through to the carriers and back um, using our connectivity. So our, our strategy is sort of three-tiered. It's based on uh, automation at the desktop, mobility at the point of sale, and connectivity to the insurers. And, um, and, and repeatability of process, which uh, is what you would need to be able to prove if you were in a lawsuit or something like that, an ENO lawsuit. So that's our, our approach. So the ability to manage processes, whether it's a, a sales process or maybe it's more service oriented like a renewal process, is uh, one step in, in ENO prevention. The second step is being able to create actions that employees must follow to execute that process. And so if you have consistency in how, uh, how work is done in your, within your brokerage, that, that is a huge step towards you know, reducing or eliminating. You'll never eliminate, but reducing E&O. Do yeah. 
Um, we actually don't think that the, they affect the performance of the VMS or CMS at all. So the size of the database has no effect on the actual performance. Um, it's conceivable, though, that if you don't have the right hardware in place, that certainly, you know, if your database gets too big for, for what you have in place, then yes, there could be troubles. But the size of the database doesn't have an effect. Now, we, we do recommend, though, that, that looking at the use of a document management system just simply for the benefits that a document management system would give you that your BMS doesn't. You know, being able to sort of track who's printing the document, who's looking at the document, where are they emailing it, how are they sending it. So uh, uh, a document management system would give you those extra pieces, but it's, uh, putting your documents in your CMS or BMS should not affect the performance at all. Yeah, and that's what we talked about a little bit yesterday as well. As long as it's your software is architected properly, properly, and using enterprise solutions, it's not it's not an issue at all. You should be able to have uh, millions of documents in there and uh, access them in in, uh, in real time and not be an issue at all. So, uh, question for you: What part of your technology do you focus in upon most to protect the users against the um, and Again, similar to yesterday, is that it's 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 more about um, the change that you implement in your software for your uh, for your clientele. We've got uh, um, if if you've designed your software properly, it should be a value add and it should be simple to use. It's it's the change process or the the transition that we talk about in uh, in getting that new process and new workflow going in your system. So ideally, there's no difficulty in your system. It's the change, and once you put it out there and getting brokers, if you're changing systems, it's that process that becomes difficult and. Everybody manages that um, at an enterprise level all the time, or should be so. Sure. I think it follows the same as what Brock was saying. Um, if we have to pick one, I would pick our marketing. <laughs> and not that the marketing is difficult to use, but it comes back to the processes. So the marketing module is there. It's very point and click. But you need to know exactly what the end result of what you're doing. I mean, Sean said it earlier today. We need to know what the end result is. So I think a lot of brokers struggle with that one functionality. Um, and it simply starts with actually putting the marketing plan in place and then using the module to actually execute it. I hate to sound like a broken record, but a single sign-on. <laughs> it's easy to use. Uh, uh, the barrier to entry is just getting the users' names and passwords in there. Uh, and it's such a powerful feature. It's unbelievable that people won't take that time to put that. They'll they'd rather, rather have it on a sticky note on their desk. And, and the thing is, from a, a brokerage point of view, uh, there's a risk there when somebody's fired or leaves and takes those sticky notes with them and runs down to Starbucks and sees all the work they've done on the insurer's portals, right? If you take the time in your systems, and I think all of us have this capability where you can put the passwords, usernames and passwords in uh, at the administrator level without them even knowing them, then your risk when somebody leaves your brokerage uh, is not there. You just shut off their Windows account and their, and their BMS or CMS account if they're not tied to the Windows authentication, and they're gone. They don't even know how to log into a portal. So that's the one uh, is just getting a username and password in, as dumb as that sounds. <laughs> It's interesting for us, again, we're middleware, we deal with a, a lot of the different broker management systems. The thing is the training and how they use it. It's making sure that the data is going into their broker management system consistently, appropriately, so that when we do the extractions or we do the other data management pieces, you want to do your system reporting, you want to do your workflow processing, that that data is in there. I guess I'm going to pull way up to the top level. Uh, we see it as sort of a cultural thing. Um, you look at, we see lots of different brokers, uh, just like Kim, from one user to hundreds of users. And, and the ones that uh, have developed a culture of continuous improvement, um, a lot of the things that Sean was talking about, uh, I didn't hear him today, but I did hear his speech yesterday, talks yesterday. That's great stuff. And those kind of brokers that buy into what Sean was talking about uh, tend to use almost all of their system. They're hungry for more all the time. And, you know, they start off with 10% and then 25% and 70% and 80% and then they're telling us to add more things to the product. So it's a cultural thing and you can create that culture if you don't have it and that's it. So uh, the, the high performance
high-performing brokers, uh, they spend time on their business, they think about their business and how they can make it better, uh, then they execute on those thoughts that they've had. So uh, it can be things like participating in user groups, uh, continuing education, and not just CE credits, but they engage consultants like Sean or use our services to come into their organization and provide that that fresh look or that fresh eye and look at their operations. How are they using the technology that they have? Are they being efficient and effective? And then they, they execute on those recommendations that they've received. Yeah, so from our standpoint, I think what we see most often is uh, the administrative piece of the system. So everything that has to do with all the codes, all the drop down menus, the attachment codes, the sub codes, uh, the reporting piece, the activities that they use, the follow-ups, everything that they use to um, manage the system, not from just a functionality, but how to report from it and how to extract results from the system. Um, if we set it up and administer it properly from the start, we really get the greatest bang for the buck, so to speak, out of the BMS. A lot of the times, if it hasn't been set up adequately at the beginning or we don't know what the output will be, we just know what the input is, um, then brokers often get a little bit discouraged, I guess, with their systems and say, well, I'm not getting the reports that I want or I'm not getting the information that I want out of the system. So really, really heavy time and energy spent on the admin piece at the beginning and then we see a great uptake from the staff after that. I think it's just so showing the consistency in it. Our top performing brokers and the brokers that are using the system have defined workflows. And a key in one of the sessions I was with you, Wendy, you said current workflows defined. Current is the important part of that. It's continuous. I'm going to steal from Sean from yesterday. The whole workout thing, it's great. You can work out and you can get to where you have to go, but you have to keep doing that. It doesn't stop once you, you hit that point that you're working towards. You're constantly making those changes and updating. And also uh, implementing the new... Uh, features that your vendors or middleware are providing for you because they're all built we're all building those with the intention of streamlining and making your workflows more effective uh, yeah that's pretty much it it's again it's yeah they're not <laughs> shows over yeah <laughs> the least show yeah. <laughs> yeah it was all right okay why don't why don't the why don't the Maple Leafs drink coffee right on <laughs> that's, that's the end of my show. <laughs> no, we can move to the last. So the, the last question is that the digital world is truly, truly upon us. So what is TDW doing to help brokers who are real customers feed into that world? Yeah, uh, uh, kind of a segue to the, the, the very first uh, uh, topic we ran into. It's, it's extending... It's extending the whole uh, carrier rating and underwriting processes right to the BMS. And that's all through we're at the age now where it's all through web services and we should be able to do everything from the BMS directly to the carrier and return in real time. So I mean, that's the focus. That's the focus that's going on for, for everybody up here. And we will get there in, in short order um, amongst everybody here. Uh, as an extension of that, for the, for the brokerages, and I'm a fourth generation broker, 100 years this year, by the way, just so you know. Um, we've got, we're trying to extend that to uh, our clientele, right? It's all the, it's our broker face that we want out there to all our clients um, in the industry. So if we can, by virtue of extending the company to the broker and those real-time processes where it makes sense to our brokerage to allow self-serve online, then that's what we want to do. So we're getting there. I mean, the, the technology's there and, and, the, and the processes are there. So hopefully shortly. Um, so we've talked a bit about our Keel Connect, um, so making it easier for our brokers to send information to the companies. We have our Keel Cap, which is our consumer access point, allowing the self-service on, on broker websites So for our clients uh, and their clients. Uh, the Keel Cloud, so the Keel Cloud is our hosting environment that removes the IT and system administrator sort of headaches from the broker um, so that they can work on being brokers. Um, and our consulting service, which is to assist our brokers. So I think consistently on the panel, we've been saying that you have to look at your workflows and constantly redefine them. So working with our product and constantly looking at our best practices for the best way to use the system and sharing that with our brokers. Is that it? Drum roll. <laughs> um, 
so we, we're working with a customer right now, actually a brokerage firm in Western Canada, and um, they have a large program, and the program that they're running has a really heavy monthly reporting requirement. And so they were getting from their customers every month, either Excel sheets or Word documents or even faxes um, with the monthly reports of all their scheduled items that had to be then brought to the insurance company. So from that standpoint, it was taking up in the area of six to seven days a month for these employees to be able to transfer all that data to one Excel sheet and then submit it to the insurance company and also try and attach all that information to those individual customers. Um, so we helped them build a client facing portal because they already had a document management solution that they were working with and what that portal did is it allowed all the customers to come to the portal, enter their monthly reporting. Thou those reports were all brought together to one Excel sheet automatically, so automation was coming into place to bring everybody's monthly report to one Excel sheet, have it submitted to the carrier as one lump sum total at the end of the month. And at the same time, the document management solution was attaching each of these individual monthly reports that people were doing online to the client files um, and even creating an activity saying the work was done. So it went from being a six, seven day a month process to being just several, maybe two, three hours. It really isn't that hard for them at all to submit it anymore. So it's, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do when we, when we put our, our minds to it. So brokers have different thoughts on what the digital world is. So with some brokers, it's about having a presence on the web, supporting their branding message in that fashion and providing information to their clients and prospects.